Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 30th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I noticed in our first scene URL list that we had a new variant for a little bit an older confluence vulnerability. This vulnerability in Atlassian's confluence was patched back in October, has been exploited since then, but uh, well, uh, there's sort of a small little add-on to the exploit script. So first of all, the exploit sort of usually comes in three requests in this case. The first request sets the setup complete flag for Confluence to false. What this means is, well, Confluence thinks it's no longer properly configured. So it will now, when you hit Confluence, offer you to add an admin user. The second request will then set up that new admin user and the third request will turn Confluence back into its normal setup complete mode so that way other users will not be presented with the page that allows them to set up an admin user. The end effect is that you have a new admin user added to the Confluence instance and yes, uh, turning the setup complete on and off does not require authentication, which is sort of the real flaw here that was patched by Atlassian. So what we're seeing now is a slightly improved attack against this vulnerability. It adds sort of a somewhat random looking uh, string to the end of the URL. I don't find any special meaning in it. It looks base64 encoded, but it looks like random data starts with the word cache followed by the random data. I always see the same random data from this one particular attacker. I think this is all about avoiding these requests from being served from cache. So that way an attacker will be able to get directly to the possible vulnerable confluence server and uh, not get sort of distracted by any request that a cache like a load balancer so may already have cached for this Confluence server. That's at least my idea. If anybody has any better uh, ideas so what's going on here, let me know. Always interesting to hear uh, what others think about some of these slightly odd requests. And yes, we still are getting more malicious Python packages. Fortinet has a list of the latest packages that they are seeing. These packages install some fairly complete info stealer malware on the developer's system. So again, these malicious packages will be installed as you are installing the respective infected Python package. The info stealers apparently are going after crypto coin addresses. Uh, one thing that they all have in common is that the developer is just using the ID W. S, so just the two letters and Fortinet does estimate that there are about 2000 victims who have downloaded and installed these malicious packages. They do appear to be sort of an evolution of packages described last year by check marks according to Fortinet. What I kind of like in this blog post, they're talking a little bit about, you know, some of the techniques to detect some of these malicious packages, some of the indicators to look for, like, for example, scripts copying data into the Windows startup folder. We one thing, I think also finding like, you know, pre-configured uh, sort of crypto coin address and such, uh, that I think is also a strong evidence that uh, this is probably not the package that you intended to install. And we've got an interesting vulnerability patch for the Linux kernel CVE 2023-6200. This is an arbitrary code execution vulnerability. It's a use after free vulnerability that can then be used to trigger code execution in ICMP v6 router advertisements. In order to send a router advertisement to trigger this vulnerability, an attacker has to be located in the same network. Router advertisements are not routed in IPv6. At this point, I'm not aware of any proof of concept exploits 
or how difficult it may be to create one of these exploits. But uh, watch out for updates from your Linux distributions to fix this vulnerability. As an alternative, I could mention that you may just want to disable router advertisements. Uh, that's actually the default, as Red Hat points out in its version of the advisory for Red Hat Enterprise. I could also say just disable IPv6, but I'd rather not because then I always get a lot of email from people telling me that I shouldn't recommend disabling IPv6. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.